Hello everyone, here's my next expert video on functional safety. Today we're talking about the functional safety concept. You will learn quite a bit about creating such a concept in this video. And I will highlight nine important aspects, kind of lessons for you to take with you on your journey. My name is Erwin Petri. I'm principal and functional safety expert at Kugler Mark. I give automotive training courses on functional safety. I consult companies and I assess projects. Let's take a look at the safety life cycle. After hazard analysis and risk assessment, the functional safety concept is the next logical step in controlling faults in the electronic systems of road vehicles. This is because it defines what needs to be done to achieve safety goals on the vehicle architecture level. I'm often asked what actually distinguishes a safety concept from a set of safety requirements. Is a safety concept more than the sum of all safety requirements? Another question I'm constantly asked is how do you know if you have enough safety measures in place for your project or maybe you have too many or are they too expensive? As much as possible, in a video like this, I'll give you answers on these questions. First, I will explain what the functional safety concept is. Then I'll address what it must specify this is followed by notes on how to assess whether sufficient safety requirements are specified, plus explanations of the creation process. Finally, I'll summarize the most important lessons for you. Part 3 of ISO 26262 is about the functional safety concept. Under Clause 7, there are requirements the result of which is a work product simply called the functional safety concept. You'll have learned this in my previous video on the concept phase. Take a closer look at the definition of this work product. The functional safety concept must provide a specification on how goals will be achieved for a specific item. This item is something like a feature that the car maker wants to install in a vehicle, for example, adaptive cruise control. The expectation is that the functional safety concept provides sufficient and convincing arguments as to how safety goals are met. In specific terms, the functional safety concept consists of functional safety requirements. For example, this could be a requirement that the adaptive cruise control system must be switched off in a controlled manner after X seconds if there is no reliable information as to whether a driver still has their hands on the steering wheel. Or that the automatic park assist system can only be activated when the vehicle is stationary. A note. At this level, be careful not to already expect certain technical solutions to be defined. Safety requirements are not enough by themselves, however, as we know from ISO 26262. The term mentioned in this respect is additional information or associated information. Reviewers and assessors expect concepts and requirements to be described in a comprehensible way. So, with our example, it could be explained how the car maker arrived at X seconds and what assumptions underlie this. Each functional safety requirement must be specifically assigned to the vehicle components in which it is implemented. In our example, this would mean that the steering wheel with its control unit is assigned a hands-on steering wheel mechanism with a specific ASIL. And that the functional safety concept must describe how vehicle components interact. So, for example, 
that communication between the control unit used for adaptive cruise control and the hands-on steering wheel ECU must be implemented safely with an ASIL. Or that the adaptive cruise control unit does not automatically reactivate vehicle control when the hands-on steering wheel control unit reports back with reliable information after a longer period of time. At this point, I would like to note two initial lessons. The functional safety concept is created on a vehicle level, so it's the car maker's responsibility. Creating it requires an understanding of how vehicle components interact. Suppliers are usually given the functional safety requirements they must implement in their systems and components on an individual basis. And there's a second lesson. As authors of the functional safety concept, you must explain in an understandable way how each individual safety goal will be achieved. I would now like to explain which questions must be answered by the functional safety concept. These are What strategy is used in the development project to avoid faults later in the vehicle as far as possible? What must be provided multiple times and independently in the vehicle to cope with failures of individual components? How and how quickly must vehicle technology detect relevant faults, that is, those that could lead to hazardous situations? How must detected faults be reacted to? So, for example, to which safe state must the vehicle technology switch and how quickly? If a timely change is not possible, what does a transition state with as little risk as possible look like? This could be, for example, slow braking of the vehicle. This is referred to as fail-safe and fail-operational. What displays and prompts must drivers receive in the event of failures in order to avoid accidents and injuries themselves? What criteria are used to validate safety? That is, how will it later be judged that safety goals have been met? If these questions are answered comprehensively and completely in such a way that the safety goals are achieved with the concept, then you have created a good functional safety concept. Let's note a third important lesson. You must have addressed the interrelationships of technical faults, safety mechanisms and driver behavior in the functional safety concept. But now the really interesting question. How do you know if you already have enough safety requirements for the ACIL? For example, are two separate sensors required? Do I need a second power supply for an actuator for a certain transition period? What criteria must messages meet between two control units? There are, there are rarely standard answers to such questions. But various vehicle type approval regulations contain concrete demands such as the mechanical connection between the steering wheel and the wheels. If applicable, use proven industry concepts and solutions such as the EGAS monitoring concept. In automotive, it is sufficient if there is a single mechanism or an expected driver reaction that results in no one being hurt in the event of an electrical electronic problem. In other words, single redundancy, a shutdown mechanism or an emergency operation is generally sufficient, unlike in aircraft design, for example. Or put another way, in justified exceptional cases, there may not even be a safety mechanism for a possible single point fault. And what about dual point faults? That is, faults that can only lead to the violation of a safety goal in combination with another fault. 
In this case, it is expected that they are detected, perceived and repaired within a reasonable period of time. Then, ISO 26262 contains clear specifications in part 5 with regard to random hardware failures. However, it's not entirely clear regarding systematic failures. Message communication will always be protected against typical failure modes. Safety-related data must be protected against unauthorized access and bit errors. Sufficient performance of the microcontrollers must help to ensure that information about the vehicle status is available in a timely manner. Often a rule of thumb can be useful. Look at the tables in Annex D of Hardware Part 5 of ISO 26262. For ACLC and D safety goals, choose measures with high 99% diagnostic coverage with respect to directly hazardous faults. For ACLB, measures with medium 90% diagnostic coverage are sufficient. At this point, I would like to capture three further lessons. First, ISO 26262 does not offer a universally valid safety concept. This is why there are many possible solutions open to you as authors. Second, there is no binding and universally valid answer to the question regarding which safety measures must be implemented for which application or which ACIL. Ultimately, this question is answered by a combination of requirements within ISO 26262, by vehicle type approval regulations and by industry practice. Also, the safety assessor must agree with suggested solutions. Third, there should be no single point faults and dual point faults should only occur intermittently. Okay, it's probably now obvious that you can't come up with a functional safety concept by brainstorming. You need to adopt a systematic approach and involve a whole variety of people. I will now shed some light on this aspect. First of all, there is the concept itself, which is currently work in progress. You have to describe how individual safety goals will be achieved. Don't forget that it's important to document relevant assumptions. Then we have the central element of the functional safety concept, the set of functional safety requirements. And then there are the validation criteria I mentioned. Adopting a systematic approach includes assigning functional safety requirements to different elements of the vehicle architecture. This is to clarify the context within which each safety requirement is implemented. And then comes what is perhaps the most important aspect when it comes to working systematically. You have to perform safety analysis. By using FMEAs and fault tree analysis and by understanding dependencies between faults or proving independencies between different architectural elements, you can ensure not only that the functional safety concept is adequate, but also that it's complete. This leads me to another lesson I want to capture. You must use safety analysis to underpin the safety concept. Back to our systematic way of working. One essential tip must not be overlooked. Your working methods will never be 100% sequential. There are always dependencies. When you're working on one topic, it influences another. For example, adding an important safety mechanism may result in changes to the safety analysis and the architecture. To complete the picture, it should be mentioned that your functional safety concept must be subjected to a review and receive official confirmation after completion. Independent persons are called in. They apply checklists and experience to verify and confirm that the concept meets expectations. 
let's keep two important points in mind. Creating a functional safety concept is an iterative process that takes you through the concept, requirements, architecture and analysis. And you need to have your finished functional safety concept confirmed independently. So now you know a little more about functional safety concept and how to assess whether you have included enough safety features. Finally, I will summarize all of the key lessons you should take with you. First, functional safety concepts are created on a vehicle level, which is why they are the responsibility of car makers. Second, as authors of the functional safety concept, you must explain in a comprehensible way how each individual safety goal is to be achieved. Third, the functional safety concept must address the interrelationships between technical faults, safety mechanisms and driver behavior. Fourth, ISO 26262 does not offer a universally valid safety concept, which is why there are many possible solutions open to you as the author. Fifth, there is no binding and universally valid answer to the question of which safety measures must be implemented for which application and which ASIL. But industry practice is visible emerging on this for all the individual vehicle features. Sixth, the concept should be such that there is no single point failures, that is a single fault would directly endanger human life and faults that are dangerous in combination with another fault must not be permanently present in the vehicle. Seventh, you must use safety analysis to underpin the safety concept. Eighth, creating a functional safety concept is an iterative process of concept, requirements, architecture and analysis. And finally, you need to have the completed functional safety concept confirmed independently. So, if you work for a car maker, it remains for me to wish you success in compiling your functional safety concept. If you work for a supplier, hopefully you now have a better understanding of what to expect from the manufacturer in the areas that overlap with your products. You can also go through all of this at your leisure. Simply use the link below to download the corresponding white paper. If you enjoyed the video and are interested in other technical topics, please subscribe to this Kuglamak YouTube channel and watch more videos. And maybe you'll recommend our videos to your colleagues. See you soon. Googler Mag and Company is engineering made smart.